So hello, once again, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it, it's our great pleasure to host another webinar of our series. Uh, yeah, because we constantly are uh, trying to, to, to be as productive and as uh, on the leading edge of the technologies and of the services and early stages drug discovery as, as it is possible. Uh, so uh, I just want to remind you several uh, rules of the webinar. So first of all, uh, you guys all would be muted uh, for all duration of the webinar. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, there is a toolbox, uh, uh, which uh, there is a chat box or a question box uh, where actually you can paste your questions. Uh, if so, and after the webinar, uh, Olga will be answering the questions. That's basically the first rule of the webinar. And the other uh, couple of things to mention that I would like to mention is the following that uh, the webinar will be recorded and uh, the, the recording of the webinar would be available for everyone uh, uh, basically tomorrow uh, tomorrow on our YouTube page and all the participants and uh, guys who uh, have registered, uh, they will receive the link. Uh, so basically, they can uh, watch the webinar again or uh, share the link with, uh, with colleagues of yours who couldn't make it today and join us. Um, but apart from that, uh, yeah, I just want to remind another another time that uh, I would like uh, to ask you, uh, all of you, to subscribe to our social media in order not to miss our events and our news highlights and et cetera, et cetera, and just to stay connected with us and to stay sharp. Okay, so that's basically uh, the, the main uh, intro of the webinar, and uh, I would uh, it will, the webinar will consist of two parts. So the first part, uh, I will talk a couple of minutes about ChemSpace, what we do, what we are, where we are now, uh, what are our goals and their main, main uh, things that we're, we're doing our best to accomplish. And the second, basically the main part would be the presentation of August, uh, talk on uh, chemical spaces, uh, on uh, the approaches and uh, on the hit discovery of camp space. So uh, I would like to ask you on whether you can see my slides at the moment. Yeah, uh, so let's get started. Uh, so camp space is, uh, is uh, relatively, as we used to say it all the time, that we're a relatively uh, young company because we were found in 2015. So uh, there is one and a half, one slightly less than one and a half years we will be celebrating 10 years anniversary and our main uh, headquarters are in Kiev, Ukraine where basically all the uh, team is located and uh, where actually i am right now uh, with all the team and apart from that we have two logistic hubs and offices in uh, in european union in Riga, Latvia, and to cover the European logistics, and one of those in uh, another one in the, the U.S. in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, so our mm, team is constantly growing. So there are more than sixty employees, uh, which I'm very happy to, uh, because we are enlarging and we are evolving and we are uh, making uh, our goals and fulfilling uh, the our projects uh, so our mission and our vision is this the main business activities of chem space is uh, there are actually three of those uh, which starts from the heat discovery uh, eventually when after that we have this procurement and sourcing uh, services uh, with having the largest catalog of chemicals and biologics and uh, the ability to integrate with your enterprise research planning systems and having camp spaces come basically behind the firewall. And also we do support compound management and procurement procurement of the compound services, basically to deliver uh, the final compounds to your bench. Uh, I don't want to focus, uh, don't want to waste time on the heat discovery services because Olga would be 
covering uh, all of those. And uh, that's the main course of the presentation. Uh, so I'm going to the next slide. So uh, with the ChemSpace catalog, ChemSpace catalog is uh, fully searchable online on chemspace.com. And uh, overall, we are the largest marketplace uh, on the market uh, with, uh, with small molecules and biologics, uh, uh, both uh, having a, an account with in-stock uh, compounds and uh, make on-demand uh, analogs to those compounds. Apart from that, we also support uh, our customers and clients with compound sets and uh, tool compounds for chemical and chemical probes, and uh, well, more than some quite time ago, we launched biologics uh, with the antibodies, proteins, and biologics kits, which are all searchable online on chemspace.com. Uh, apart from, as I mentioned, uh, on the the largest uh, available catalog on the market with 11 billion uh, small molecules and uh, almost half of million of biologics. Uh, we provide uh, our mm, customers and clients with the two types of integration solutions. Uh, the first one is the punch out site. So basically punch out site is a, a is the addition to uh, to your ERP system where basically we connect those uh, chemspace.com with your ERP system and you are working uh, with chemspace.com behind your, the firewall, having everything uh, which has the chemspace.com, but uh, more focusedly and uh, uh, we have special solutions, we have uh, special uh, catalogs, we have special, uh, uh, Special uh, special discounts for those catalogs, and basically the uh, different additions to 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 the chemspace.com. And uh, if uh, another type of integration solution that we uh, we provide is a standalone portal, so it's basically your company name dot chemspace.com. It's another way to 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 integrate with the, uh, to to create a different system uh, based on the chemspace. And having this the, uh, the largest catalog available for for you uh, on your computer. Uh, so uh, we'll, it's it, both systems works pretty pretty uh, straightforward. So you basically connect it, uh, order, put everything and you would like you are searching uh, for and uh, ordering, and basically we will, we will fulfill uh, the the process by ourselves. And uh, the features are basically uh, they're pretty similar to what we have on uh, on Campspace as well. But as I mentioned, we have the order tracking and uh, uh, custom weights, uh, additional catalogs such as building blocks for library synthesis. A uh, very cool uh, catalog that is uh, that could be delivered. Compass could be delivered uh, in micromolar amounts, and so basically you can uh, screen them right away. And uh, also uh, another cool functionality, uh, the list order and uh, functionality and optimal port. Uh, a list order is basically you can order a list of compounds just in several clicks and basically you can go uh, pretty smoothly and easily uh, from that. And an optimal quote is basically the functionality when you can, uh, you can receive proper prices for also uh like with special special additions and discounts on a set of compounds and also uh when when we pr provide our customers and clients for sourcing and procurement services as i mentioned so basically we it's 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 up to you to to, to choose from different suppliers and uh, that's basically up to us to uh, eventually ship uh, those compounds to one place, uh, repack it through weight, uh, have a liquid handling, and basically just one a parcel delivered to you. And mm, the, uh, also Chemspace obviously provides uh, early uh, drug discovery solutions, starting from target identifications into the heat identification and uh, to lead, heat to lead identification, and uh, eventually to the lead optimization. And we can uh, basically uh, get up to the preclinical studies uh, if uh, 
you basically work with us. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's that would be all from my side. Uh, and I hope uh, you found it uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so right now I would pass the word to Olga, and Olga will be covering those services that we provide. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Olga, I will pass the word to you, and the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Olga. Just, just um, give, me a give me a second. I will uh, make you a presenter so you can, will be able to share your screen. Yes, I think you can, you can, you can right now. Yes, okay. we can see your screen. Okay, great. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Alexei, for uh, such a nice introduction. Yeah, today um, I will be talking about uh, machine learning approaches uh, for creation and exploration of chemical spaces. Okay. Uh, synthetically accessible molecules are important in other drug discovery. Uh, it's a reliable, a reliable source of uh, getting new starting points for field discovery projects, for performing SCR by catalog for existing heads and for compound collection and testing. Uh, there are several spaces like this with synthetically accessible mo molecules um, available and well known, among them in the real space. Uh, Rougie Galaxy Space, uh, Tava Cambria, and Immolecules Explorer. All these spaces uh, differ from each other um, by the data utilized to create these spaces, uh, chemical space uh, coverage, diversity of chemistry, uh, synthetic success rate, leak time, and eventual pricing. The most known and uh, the most popular is in the mean real space. And there are many cases reported uh, resulting in hits from inland via. And the main reason uh, for such um, appreciation and for such a success uh, is accumulated experimental knowledge on building block um, reactivity and uh, chemical procedures. But in the mean real cover, um, is designed, is built on uh, solely in an building blocks. That's why it doesn't cover all, all the synthetically accessible space. And we were thinking uh, how we can cover a larger space but maintain the main features of in an wheel, like high success rate, fast turnaround time, and affordable pricing. Uh, and we saw like a few ways to proceed. Uh, for example, we could untake all commercial available building blocks and apply um, selected synthetic procedure to enumerate the space. Another way to proceed is use known chemical procedures from REXIS, for example, and apply them to um, compatible building blocks. But in both cases, in both these cases, we were facing a low deliverability and long lead time. And there is a sort of way, actually, ML assisted space generation. Uh, an approach, machine learning approach, requires access to well-validated data. And we were lucky to get this data because of our collaboration with Inami. Uh, there is a general scheme how we uh, generate this space. And the main idea here is to apply machine models to select reagents uh, for, generate, for generating molecules with high synthetic feasibility by filtering out potentially bad reagents. Even we provided us with statistics for each reagent for, for the particular reaction. Uh, we used um, machine learning approaches to, uh, classify, uh, to, to perform classification of these reagents and apply these models to commercially available reagents to filter out these potential bad reagents. 
and then we use this region to generate this paper. So here you can see validation set performance, and we selected threshold 0 0.8 to, to be sure that we uh, filtered out up to 83% of potentially bad regions. Uh, there is an example of uh, amid coupling, how we generate uh, like our workflow. So uh, using this workflow, we selected uh, potentially good regions, but, uh, which will result in suitable compounds uh, from amines and for carboxylic acids. We enumerate them and ended up with 314 million uh, final compounds. The same workflow was applied to the, uh, all eight reactions all, all eight reactions uh, we selected uh, for, uh, for, 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 for the freedom space. Okay, um, so the final number of molecules uh, in the freedom space is five billion molecules. Okay, uh, the next step uh, was to characterize the space with that. Uh, and to do so, we calculated physiochemical criteria uh, for all five billion molecules. And you can see here that most of the molecules are drug-like. But uh, the criteria for drug-likeness uh, were formulated like over 20 years ago by uh, Robert and Lipinski. And new challenges in drug discovery process led to going beyond rule of five. In, in this case, Freedom space could be a really good source for, uh, for the molecules for less druggable targets that need compounds with unique physiochemical properties, for example, large and non greedy molecules, etc. The number of compounds uh, available for heat discovery is very important. But the number of compounds itself it doesn't guarantee the success of the project. And the real value of the space is in combination of numbers, number of compounds, diversity, and complexity of compounds. There are a few ways to describe the chemical space. The shape of the molecule, the number of molecular scaffolds or frameworks, and the complexity of the compounds. So we started with shape of the molecule. And we calculated um, NPMI descriptor, and here you can see the distribution, and you can see that uh, we have kind of good covering uh, for freedom space, all shape of the molecules. Over 79,000 uh, sphere-like scaffolds we have available in freedom space. To describe diversity and biologically um, in, application, in, in, in application relevant manner, we compare freedom space uh, to the real database, uh, which is 5.5 billion molecules, is the most usable and the most um, uh, well known among the researchers um, database of uh, synthetically accessible compounds. And also, we compared freedom space uh, with Campbell database. Uh, as a source of uh, compounds with uh, annotated biological activity. Uh, to do this uh, analysis, to compare these spaces, we calculated Murkoff frameworks uh, and analyzed the results. And here you can see uh, that uh, less than 5% uh, uh, overlap between freedom space and real database. And it should maybe I should mention that there is no like exact matches between uh, these two uh, two databases, which uh, uh, makes freedom space kind of a unique space. Uh, it covers like unique chemical space, and it could be uh, a really good uh, addition to a uh, real database. Uh, the number of uh, frameworks uh, in real database, uh, like. Only a few times more, um, uh, like uh, the same the same um, frameworks uh, as, a, as in Campbell, just in few times more uh, compared with the freedom space. And freedom space itself contains 110 million uh, frameworks, 
which show high diversity and increase the possibility of covering many tasks. Um, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we also um, uh, we also analyze the freedom space uh, in context uh, in context um, of most bi biologically active functional groups. And in this case, we were inspired by a work of Peter Elto, uh, where he analyzed different ring system in terms of bioactivity. So what we did, we calculated uh, the number of compounds that contain the ring system, uh, which is associated with a particular group of tasks. And here you can see the results. Uh, okay, freedom space uh, is accessible. Um, so uh, it's accessible uh, in smiles, and also you can get access uh, through campspace.com. You can apply different type of searches, index of such similarity, and also it's uh, available through Infinity and uh, Space Lab. Yeah, uh, we encourage you know everyone to use this space uh, for discovery projects. And so far, um, the reported success rate based on the number of experiments uh, on average is over 75%, which is, which is really good. Okay, exploration of chemical spaces, it's a, a, like another, um, another problem uh, like a lot of scientists are working on. And uh, the wrong approaches, uh, approaches to Searching chemical spaces by molecular similarity and feature and feature similarity implemented in M in F3 space flight, space maps, uh, and other approaches. Molecular docking is another way to uh, explore chemical spaces and find um, potential heat molecules. And fragment-based approaches uh, in molecular docking is again like more and more uh, popularity uh, now. And we at ChemSpace uh, we successfully used us, such approaches like we synthesis crystal structure first uh, in our projects. Uh, but today uh, I would like to um, like pay more attention to another way to search in uh, chemical spaces and. Uh, this approach uh, is called DNA encoded library uh, uh, in combination with machine learning. DNA encoded libraries um, have been proven itself um, as a um, like really, really good tool, uh, in a uh, good approach in drug discovery. Uh, and it, it was uh, this approach was used uh, a lot of companies, private companies, academia. Uh, and the classical approach in, uh, includes uh, DNA encoded library uh, itself, uh, the selection round, um, the amplification and DNA sequencing, data analysis, and off DNA sequencing. Coupling machine learning with that technology brought a new possibility for the exploration of chemical spaces of tens of billions of molecules. Dell screens generate a large number of data. And application of ML to the data, utilizing modern graph-based neural network, makes it possible to skip this optimal synthesis stage or in parallel generate a low-cost diversity hits from synthetically accessible spaces like in a new wheel. Uh, okay, today um, I would like to show you a case study we performed it at ChemSpace. So we used a relatively small uh, DNA encoded library, uh, it's called DOSDEL1. It contains 108,000 molecules, it's, and this is the only publicly available library. This library was screened against carbonic and hybrid. It's a well known fact that uh, DNA encoded libraries uh, can generate like a lot of data. But it should be mentioned that uh, the data are quite noisy uh, because of uh, matrix binding, because of uh, truncation product, unequal initial loss, and also amplification and sequencing um, bring um, some additional biases. 
So that's why it's important to pay attention to this um, uh, to this initial data and to do something with them to make them less noisy. And we come up with so-called Dyson-Tone aggregation approach uh, to reduce this noise in the data and to normalize count. Each molecule from uh, this um, from this cell uh, was uh, split uh, into Dyson tones. Then we aggregate these Dyson tones and calculate the energy. And, uh, on the left, you can see as a distribution of counts for, uh, <clears throat> for let's say for non-target selection and for target selection, and on the right. Is our uh, enrichment distribution for Dyson tones. And you can see that some of the uh, Dyson tones enriched more and some of them enriched less. The total number of Dyson tones for this uh, particular library was uh, 12.4 um, K. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, uh, there is uh, um, also, uh, I should mention that uh, there are two ways to, to proceed. Actually, it's a regression and classification. Let me see, okay. Uh, classification and regression. Both of these approaches are widely used in, uh, in drug discovery. And the classification approach, uh, it's suitable for, uh, for data sets or with any number of data points. And regression works better on like smaller data sets, uh, less than 5 million uh, data points in, uh, um, in the data set. And unlike classification, a regression allows to get us a ranking of compounds, which is uh, like very convenient. And Basically, what, uh, since we were working with a relatively small DNA encoded library, we decided to go for regression approach. And here you can see the results of uh, regression built on Dyson, ton, uh, Dyson tones and on full molecules. And you can see here that uh, Dyson tone aggregation is an absolutely necessary step uh, to, to proceed with. Uh, because it helps us uh, to, to, to get this correlation and uh, to, to help us to, to get the trend in the data. And uh, yeah, unlike, um, as, uh, as you can see, for full, full molecules. Okay, we validated our, uh, our model uh, we developed uh, using external set with known binders for carbonic anhydrase from binding DNA. And to compare the results, we used Perman Kaye. And uh, yeah, you can see here, uh, uh, like it's a um, on this table. So our result is the last, last line. And Perman Kaye is quite low, uh, which is good. Like all other results, it's a result of different scientific groups, uh, which were working with the same um, external set with known binders for carbonic inhibitors, but they used different approaches uh, to predict uh, this uh, kind of uh, activity. Uh, the, uh, quite recently, it was uh, published uh, like a really great work uh, called Bell Dog. And uh, you can see here that Sperman K is uh, a little bit lower uh, compared with our approach. But at the same time, um, this approach uh, requires uh, more extensive uh, data as an input, and that's why this approach would be like less scalable. If we let's say if we would work with uh, not uh, this small DNA encoded libraries, but uh, with uh, large li libraries like OpenBell, uh, like Hygiene or Altama. Uh, which contains uh, like billions of molecules. Uh, another step to, to validate our model uh, to make sure that the model works uh, okay, uh, we applied this model to predict a carbonic anhydrase activity uh, active, sorry, from Campbell. So what we did, we ranked uh, like all Campbell uh, compounds uh, 2.3 million. Uh, using our model. Uh, and you can see that top 
100 compounds of the ranked contained 30 real actives. So the results are, were really good and we were inspired by these results uh, and we proceed with the next step actually. The next step is prediction of the Higgs from inamine real. 36 billion compounds fully enumerated from inamine real space uh, were used to apply our model. And we selected one million compound with the highest enrichment and proceeded with a uh, different filtering by molecular weight, RCLP, and some other approaches. So once we get uh, some, uh, some selection, so we proceed with uh, clustering. We also performed visual inspection of these compounds and come up with 150 compounds uh, for, for synthesis. Synthesis succeeded for 130 compounds, which corresponds to success rate 87%, which is quite good uh, and quite usual for in a new real space. You can see that, uh, some examples of the compounds are on the slide and they are different from each other, they are novel. And the last step we did, we actually check um, uh, these compounds, whether they are binders for carbonic and heavy risk or not. So we performed thermal shift this day. We used the dominant human carbonic and heavy risk expressed by B. Yanta. Uh, we, uh, uh, let's say, run um, the experiment and quadruplicates, and uh, you can see on the slide uh, delta T and B uh, distribution for, uh, for uh, our confirmed heat. Well, for confirmation of the heat, we uh, used the same thermal shift to say. So heat rate um, is uh, over 16%, which is, which is really good. Uh, and the, on the left, uh, there is a U map, which shows you the distribution of heat and non heat uh, So it's also important uh, for us was to understand whether these compounds, are, like, uh, the heats we identified, whether they are novel or not. And uh, what we did, we ran nearest neighbor analysis uh, with uh, Campbell Actis. And yeah, you can see uh, here the time of the distance it doesn't exceed not, uh, 0 0.6, which confirms that compounds are dissimilar. Nonetheless, um, <clears throat> all of them um, contain well recognizable fragment uh, or motif for carbonic and hydrate uh, sulfonamide, which is good and uh, it means basically that the model um, uh, was able to, to recognize this fragment and to pick up uh, such molecules from a huge, huge uh, space. Yeah, uh, just a few conclusions. Um, what what we did uh, actually uh, machine learning uh, is now uh, it's now uh, it really really widely used and drug discovery and drug development and today uh, we showed that machine learning can be successfully uh, applied for space generation and we generated this freedom space which is um, large and it's uh, kind of it contains unique molecules. Uh, and uh, this space is a uh, is complementary addition to, to the existing space. And the main features of freedom space are high synthetic uh, success rate, fast turnaround time, and competitive pricing. At the same time, uh, we showed uh, that Dell technology combined with uh, machine learning is one of the ways uh, to explore chemical space like in a real. Uh, so we, we showed this uh, application of such approach uh, for to find the heats for carbonic and hydrates, and the proposed model uh, is based on Dysenton, and uh, we kind of showed the good performance and resulted uh, with experimental heats with success rate uh, over 16%. Uh, yeah, it's also also worth mentioning that uh, this approach, a VLML approach, can be successfully and uh, it was successfully actually utilized for larger commercially available DNA encoded libraries like Hidden OpenVal or AlphaMa 
cell, uh, which contain uh, like billions of molecules. Yeah, with this, I would like to conclude and I uh, would be happy to, to address the question. Yeah, thank you so much, Olga. It's a great presentation, very insightful, uh, full of basically great information. And uh, since the results were were surprising, surprisingly good, and so we, we I believe you, you you are happy to to share this information with the with the public. Yeah. So let's uh, let's wait for some questions. We'll go from there. And also, if um, if you have any questions or consider uh, consider some uh, collaborative questions uh, and such, so please don't hesitate and uh, contact me directly or Olga. Uh, so we will be all, we are always constantly uh, looking forward to, to new opportunities, and uh, we are here to to to, uh, to participate in new projects and in new. Uh, types of collaboration all the time. Thank you for that. So, I'm trying to see if the, the questions. Um, I think I have some issues with the this question box. Um, um, so far. So far, we're, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're good with questions there. No questions just yet. Don't be shy, don't hesitate because, yeah, the, the, the topics are quite broad and they Olga was unable to, to obviously cover all the details. So, but I believe we will be happy to, to cover all the, all the, just devil in the details and we will be happy to cover the questions if, if so separately in the separate calls. Well, no questions so far. Well, it's quite strange. Okay, so sometimes it, it just sometimes happens where there are no questions, and it sometimes it's good <laughs> because everything was was very straightforward, extremely straightforward. So, so yeah, so probably it was a just so. Okay, so I guess we would be uh, approaching to to the to the conclusion, and so once again, I would like to remind you that. The webinar, since the webinar is recorded, it would be dropped on our LinkedIn, uh, our YouTube page, sorry. Uh, so, and the, all of you or the particip participants will be, will receive the, the email for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the webinar. And uh, also, we will drop a post on LinkedIn uh, and other, our social media tomorrow. Uh, uh, about uh, about it, and also please encourage and uh, continue to, to to say about it. Please please subscribe to our social media in order not to uh, not uh, to uh, to uh, to miss. Ah, there is a, there is a question probably. There is uh, some issues. Uh, so we're not we're not ready yet. Uh, uh, was uh, what was the most challenging part when uh, dealing with the noisy Dell data? That is the question we have. Yeah. Uh, th thank you very much for, for, for the question. Um, I mean, um, uh, uh, the approach we use the Dyson tone approach uh, is showed itself like very good and we get uh, like really good results uh, because uh, we are not dealing like with full molecules and uh, we are dealing with uh, like 
part of the molecules. That's why we are able to identify this uh, part of the molecules, fragments are of the final molecules, which are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the most important uh, for, for this particular target. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, um, uh, like uh, this data processing, it's important for us to have like full information about uh, the library, uh, not just uh, the positives, uh, uh, let's say, uh, results count, but also negative. So in this case, it, it is possible to see like the full structure and uh, it, it's good uh, for machine learning uh, to, to, to deal with such information and uh, uh, to actually to process. And there, there's a follow-up question to the previous one. So uh, can you provide a bit more information on the model? The, on... Um, it, it, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we used to, um, uh, 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 so uh, we used a directed message passing net neural network to, to uh, to kind of to build this model and um, yeah, just let me know what uh, what uh, uh, like exactly um, uh, what exact information about uh, about the model uh, you are interested in. I, I think you you may contact me over email and uh, we can talk a little bit uh, like about the, the details. So I just like to, to say that uh, this uh, this case study I hope will be published soon. So now we are preparing. Um, the paper for, for submission. Um, yeah, so hopefully we will make it uh, possible and visible for, for the research system. Okay, great, already. So yeah, thank you so much for everyone. Thank you very much, Olga. It's a pleasure as always. So yeah, from that, I will close the webinar and take care and stay safe. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.